Good day everybody, my name is Tom, welcome to the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's really closely followed by investors and analysts all around the world, um, and that is interest rates. So interest rates are a tool that the government can use to um, kind of contract or help expand the economy. So um, it's used as a tool to try and stop the economy going into things like, like recessions and big bubbles and that sort of thing. If debt levels are getting too high, the government will push up or the Federal Reserve will push up interest rates to try and reduce borrowing. Um, and it really does have pretty big impacts on asset prices, uh, both the stock market and real estate and um, bond prices especially. So um, let's run through some basics around interest rates and what you need to know as an investor. So if you're not already aware, interest rates in today's environment are at pretty much all time sort of record lows. Um, interest rates were manipulated massively through the 2008-2009 uh, recession and housing bubble uh, over in the US. And interest rates were dropped to basically zero to try and get people to borrow more money and start spending again. Um, it was used as a tool to try and avoid uh, the United States going into a full-blown depression because it was heading that direction. Um, and so we're still at really, really low interest rates um, in sort of historical terms. So um, there's a couple of things I want to talk about with interest rates. Um, the first thing is actually to do with um, the stock market in general and bond prices. So interest rates are like gravity on the stock market. The higher that interest rates go, the lower that stocks um, are typically valued at and it's the lower that uh, other asset prices like real estate are typically valued at as well. Um, and there's a couple of key reasons behind that. So let's dive into the stock market example first. So interest rates have a really big impact on um, the amount of money that you can get paid by taking out um, what's called a treasury bill or a bond, which is often thought of as sort of a risk-free investment. It's guaranteed by um, the US government if you're investing in the, in the United States, and it's basically a guaranteed return. So when interest rates, when interest rates are low, the return or the yield you can get on your bonds are really, really low. So um, at the moment, we're probably talking anywhere from 2.5% to maybe 3%, depending on the length of that bond. Um, obviously, the longer the bond that um, you buy, you can get a slightly higher yield. If you're buying a short-term bond, you can get a little bit lower yield. So that's a typical bond price um, today. If interest rates go up, um, because bonds at the end, end of the day are debt, um, essentially you're lending the government money and they're paying you back that money over time with interest. As interest rates go up, you'll see these bond prices go up. So when we were in sort of the early 2000s, so the bubble around the sort of 99, 2000.com kind of peak, um, interest rates on bonds were more like about 5%. And as an investor, when you're trying to weigh up, you know, should I invest in bonds and be happy with my 5%, or should I take a little bit more risk and invest in the stock market and earn maybe 8 to 10%, but also risk losing 50 um, the higher that this bond figure is, um, the more attractive bonds look and the less attractive that the stock market looks because you're obviously taking a lot more risk uh, generally by investing in the stock market. So the higher that bond return is, um, the less attractive stocks look, the more money, uh, the, sorry, the less money that flows into stocks and the general valuations on those stock prices come down as well. So that's reason number one. Let's get into reason number two why it affects the stock market. The second reason is to do with company debt levels. So if a company has debt, the amount of um, money that that company has to repay each year um, is obviously very dependent on interest rates, um, assuming that they don't have sort of an interest rate, an interest rate already locked in around that debt. So um, if interest rates, if interest rates go up, debt repayment um, requirements or debt servicing also goes up. And that has sort of one big effect, which is it reduces greatly um, what's called free cash flow. 
Um, essentially, after the um, company operates its business for the year and spends money on capital expenditure, the amount of money that's left, the amount of cash that's being generated for that year is called free cash flow. Um, and the way that we value a business is on earnings and free cash flow growth and what we expect the company to earn over the coming five or 10 years or whatever period you're looking at. So um, if interest rates go up and debt repayments go up and free cash flow and earnings come down, that is automatically going to reduce the value of a business. Um, and it's really that simple. So if interest rates go up, um, you know, the stock market's looking less attractive because bonds look more attractive and companies also look less valuable because they're paying uh, more in debt and they're gonna earn less cash, gonna be able to return less cash to investors. Um, and that's bad news all around in terms of stock prices. So that's reason number two. Let's get into the third and final reason why interest rates affect stock markets and you should be keeping an eye on them at least as investors. So the third and final reason is actually around personal debt levels. Um, and this is one of the reasons why it affects real estate as well. So um, often the typical uh, kind of middle-aged person, I guess, probably owns a house, probably has a mortgage. So when you have a mortgage, um, you're going to be in pretty much the same situation as the companies in the previous example. So if you don't have interest rates locked in, if, you're, if you've got variable... Um, sort of interest rates on your, on any loans that you have, any changes that the Federal Reserve makes in interest rates, that's going to affect your mortgage repayments, it's going to uh, affect your car repayments if you've got a pay, car payment, or credit card payments if you've got a credit card. So anytime that interest rates go up, so does your mortgage repayments. And in terms of valuing real estate, when you go out and assess, okay, this is how much I can um, afford to pay in terms of um, what I can pay for my mortgage each week or month or fortnight. Um, you can assess the value of a house and say, okay, this is how much I can pay for a house. Um, if you're looking to buy an investment property, you can say, okay, this is how much I'm going to get in rent. Um, this is how much it's going to it's going to cost me to pay my mortgage each month, and therefore you can sort of figure out how much you can afford to pay for a house. Um, when interest rates go up. Uh, and mortgage repayments go up, the value of um, the value of your house, if I draw a little house there, is going to go down. So you're going to be able to pay less for a house. You're going to have, um, you know, less situations at that same value that um, a rental property is going to actually return a positive cash flow to you. So house prices come down. The other thing that comes along with this is if you already own a house um, and your mortgage repayments go up, your um, cash that you're left with at the end of each month is also going to go down. And that has a few effects. So um, one that means you're probably going to spend less money in your everyday life. Um, that's going to flow through to companies earning less money. If you're not going to McDonald's as often, <laughs> McDonald's isn't going to make as much money. And their stock price is going to suffer overall. Um, the other thing that comes along with that is if you don't have as much spare money left over each month, you're probably also not going to buy shares in McDonald's. So um, McDonald's is earning less money, they're probably paying more on their debt. Um, you've got less money to invest in them. Other people have got less money to invest in them and not, might need that cash and sell shares. All of this has a flow on effect to being bad news for stock prices. Um, and it's really as simple as that. Um, interest rates are a massively powerful tool for manipulating all of these things. And at the moment, we're in a really low interest rate environment. So um, I would keep an eye on this. Um, fundamentally, it shouldn't change your investing strategy, but you should be aware of how this um, impacts asset prices in general, and at least be aware of some basics around that happening around what's happening uh, in the world and now hopefully you can understand what people are talking about on CNBC and those sorts of things when they're talking about um, interest rate hikes and all that kind of stuff it might make a little bit more sense so hope you've enjoyed the video if you have drop it a like give me a comment love to hear your thoughts uh, and subscribe as well I am trying to grow the channel trying to get to 100 subscribers in March still so if you enjoyed it um, hang around subscribe for future content and I'll see you in the next one cheers